Hello everybody, my name is Petr Koutny and today I have for you another legendary chess game. White's king will be checkmated in next coming 7 moves. Aron Nimcovic with white pieces and Sigurd Taras with black pieces. And now is your chance to test your calculation skills and maybe you could be for a while chess hero Sigurd Taras because your goal is to checkmate white's king in the next coming 7 moves. This is one of the most exciting check made in chess history and I believe that you are going to enjoy this position, this variation and whole game. So before I will show you how white's king will be checkmated, let's enjoy this game since the beginning till end and let's say thank you very much to these two chess heroes of chess history. Aron Nimcovic is for me something like a teacher, chess teacher, because he wrote amazing chess book My System and that's nearly something like chess bible for all chess players. And Sigurd Harash was another great chess teacher and I think that lots of chess grandmasters, world chess champions and uh, normal chess players are following their ideas and plans. So let's see this game and let's enjoy and I, re I really do believe that you are going to enjoy. Without any surprise <laughs> we are watching Tarash defense with black species playing Siegbert Harash. That's a nice, that's a nice picture of two, I think, chess heroes, as I told you. So what's happened? B3 and Shore Castle. Both players has a king in a safe place, but at the end, only one king will be checkmated. And we know that uh, it will be white's king. Nothing special, bishop b2 and b6. I think that all moves make a sense because uh, white and black are going to bring their pieces to game. And bishop b2, bishop b7 and knight d2 uh, make a sense. Rook c1 and queen e7. That's something like old school because Old school believe that the best plan in the opening is to bring our pieces to game and to close the opening chapter. And when we are ready, we should open a middle game chapter. And of course, in the middle game, we have to attack two opponents' weaknesses and find the best plan. So now White decided to take something in the center and played knight h4. I don't believe that this is the strongest continuation and uh, I think that much more stronger should be to follow the old school to bring another pieces to game. Of course, a threat and ideas is to play knight h5 and to take uh, black's dark squares bishop on d6. Maybe this is a risky variation, not bad at all, not losing anything, but you know, I still believe that much more stronger is to finish our development, to bring rooks and queens to game and to play middle game before we are going to play something like these moves. So knight h4 happened, g6, of course, uh, black stop immediately this threat without any difficulties and now uh, black is asking white what is doing uh, your knight on h4. Of course, white's answer is nothing, so uh, white's knight came back to f3 and finally Tarash bring another piece to game. Rook d8, is doing a good job. Even it's hard to see what exactly is doing this rook, but I think that this rook is supporting bishop pawn and maybe attacking finally queen on d1. Of course, it's uh, too brave to tell you that this rook is attacking queen on d1, but it's doing good job, believe me. So now, oh, why to go on c5? and now played bishop b5. I'm not happy with white's play, you know. Uh, 
maybe too many unclear moves for me. I don't understand why this rook on e1 is not playing this game. Why this rook is not in the game somewhere on C or D or E file and why uh, why believe that bishop b5 is a strong move. Of course, uh, knight e4, I think that's, that's a good idea uh, to strike in the center and what is important to believe here that uh, this move has a secret threat. The threat, of course, one day if white is taking this knight uh, sorry, this knight, black but take by a pawn, and because of this pawn on e4, just imagine pawn on e4, this knight will be under attack. This knight will move anywhere. And without this knight on f3, white's king on g1 is weak. Because knight on f3 is a strong defender of white's king. And remember this idea. Every time when your opponent is without defenders, he is weak. So, okay, white decided to take on c6. Why not? And now uh, knight took on d2. That's a beautiful, of course. What's going on? If a white is taking by a queen, now let's uh, remember what is doing our rook on d8. It's still attacking everything on a d file, and d4 is a strong move. Opening position because black's got two bishops, and of course, threat is to take on f3, and then maybe to play check on uh, g4 or h4 and to attack. Uh, White king, that's a really dangerous position to white king because uh, let's watch these two bishops. They are dangerously looking to white king. And I think that white king is not smiling now. He is shaking and he is worried of next coming black's attack. Okay, for this reason, black took by a knight. But where are white king defenders now? There are no defenders and still, after move d4, these two beautiful bishops are looking exactly where white's king will be under heavy attack. Okay, now black took on h2 and that's a famous two bishop sacrifice position. This is a typical position where black is going to sacrifice two bishops and is going to win. And the reason why this variation is working is because white's king is without defenders. And that's bad for white's king, of course. So, okay, uh, white took check on h4 and now bishop took on g2. Beautiful, beautiful and good variation. So, what unlucky white's king has to do? Uh, if he's taking on g4 is a check and of course rook, li rook lives is going to h5 maybe a queen should take on c5 but anyway check on h5 check check and here is a knight on and d2 hanging it's for free and of course this position is won for black that was only variation so let's come back and uh, let's see what's happened. F3 happened and now the last beast mm, entered the game. That's a nice, that's nice because I'm enjoying game where all pieces are playing. Where we are not hurry to win a material back, but we believe in power of our pieces. That's important because chess game is a game of our pieces. And that style of uh, old school, and maybe I'm old school chess player, but that's exactly chess, what I love. So, okay, in, uh, knight e4 happened. Let's check another variation. Rook e1. Exchange, exchange. <laughs> that's not exchange, that's a loss. And check on e2 and uh, rook d5. Without defenders, there is no defend, and white's king is a dead king here. Okay, let's come back because what's happened, happened knight e4, check on h1, and now finally uh, black took rook on f1, 
f5 and now we are in our final position. That's a not question how white will checkmate black's king. That's a question how black will checkmate white's king. And first check on g2. Of course, uh, to go um, to e1 is immediately checkmate. So white's king has to go forward and that's exactly what we love to see. Now let's sacrifice our rook for another defender because we hate defender. We need to kill white's king and white's king has to be without defenders. That's good to remember. And now Okay, uh, f4. Another winning move here is giving g3. Check on f2 and checkmate on e2. But okay, uh, it was good to see move f4. Rook f8 and check on h2. That's a nice position and white king is uh, going and going in something like Johnny Walker still walking and walking and is asking for checkmate and of course it has to be checkmate checkmates anywhere and it's not far it's a waiting for white king and white king will be checkmated of course what a beautiful chess game hopefully you agree that that's an amazing chess game and that's a really beautiful game so let's thank you very much to aron Nimcovic and sigba taraj to big heroes of chess history and it's good time to remember these two guys. They did good job to chess and for all chess players. So uh, check on e8 and here one check on f4, checkmate and after king d7 it's a checkmate on b5. White's king was checkmated on b5 and uh, I think that that's a cool position. At the end of this video, thank you very much for every likes, follows and your comments. And I believe that I will see you soon in our another YouTube chess video. That was a good game. And I believe that this game will give you inspiration, motivation and chess enjoy. Play chess because chess is the best. Thank you very much for watching. See you soon. Take care. Bye bye.